Hi, good evening. I am Dr. Yusuf Kumble, Chief Interventional Cardiologist and Managing Director, Indiana Hospital and Heart Institute, Mangalore. Uh, today's special topic I want to discuss the connection between heart and brain. Though heart attack is very common and one of the commonest cause of death all over the world. But for me and for the society, stroke is very, very, very debilitating condition. You know, uh, uh, somebody in the family, they have a major stroke and not only the patient, but also the entire families severely debilitated. Somebody has to look after the patient, patient may be unconscious, patient may not be able to walk and that all the relatives and the patient uh, friends and the patient's uh, co subordinates all are psychologically affected by seeing a team because the patient cannot respond, patient cannot talk, patient cannot walk, he is bedridden. And most of the patients, they will not die also. They will be in the bed for many, many days to months to years. So, something we can do if we can, somebody can prevent stroke, that is will be the ideal situation the uh, medical field will be looking for. One of the common cause for stroke is a small emboli coming from the heart. Blood will be clotted. And this blood will go into the brain, one of the blood, blood, blood vessel, it will cause infarction of the brain. If it is a major infarction, that will be a major catastrophe. And if it is a very minor infarction, the patient will slowly improve and come back to normal life. And how to prevent this uh, embolic stroke, especially the recurrent embolic stroke, again and again, some people get a minor stroke, again they get a major stroke. One of the important aspect of the prevention of the stroke is uh, usage of oral anticoagulant medications. Oral anticoagulant medication means the blood thinning agents. Traditionally, we used to use warfarin for that. One of the very good, good medic medication especially those who are likely to have the stroke. Who are the people likely to have stroke? Those who are having heart disease with atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is heart's rhythm will go very fast, more than 300 to 400 it will go. There the people likely to develop clot inside the heart, that clot will dislodge and go to the brain, they get stroke. So, those patients who are having atrial fibrillation, this blood thinning medications that is warfarin will help to prevent the stroke. Nowadays, there are more effective medications called newer oral anticoagulants, otherwise called NOAC or novel oral anticoagulants. It is better to call it as a novel oral anticoagulants rather than newer oral anticoagulants because it is not new rather more than 10 years over now. However, initially because of the, because it is a new medication and also because of the uh, prohibitively high price and initially it is come as product size come into the market of 110 milligram, 150 milligram twice a day. But now more and more uh, Dabigatran group, more and more pharmacy, pharmaceutical companies are coming with dabigatran, this is one of the very, very effective agent to prevent stroke in non-valvular atrial fibrillation. It is not very effective in valvular condition associated with atrial fibrillation. And how this newer oral anticoagulant is different from warfarin? In warfarin, the biggest side effect is, especially it is very difficult to use in India my patients are having a lot of problems, I will tell you, because I am 
using warfarin in almost 30 percent of my patients or 20 percent of my patients are using warfarin for various reasons not only for atrial fibrillation, but for uh, peripheral vascular thrombosis, but for uh, mitral valve replacement, aortic valve replacement, atrial fibrillation and various other causes. The problem with warfarin is lab to lab the INR varies. When you take warfarin, you have to monitor INR very meticulously. If the INR is more, the patient will have bleeding. If the INR is less, this medicine is not working. So, you have to have a very, very balanced INR of 2 to 3. You have to monitor that the therapeutic window period is very narrow, range is very narrow there. So, if it is more than 3.5 INR, the likelihood of bleeding is more, if it is less than 2, the effectiveness of the warfarin is very low. Not only that, in India other problems are also there. I will tell you, uh, lab to lab, uh, it varies from lab to lab. Suppose, uh, one lab I say that today 2.2 is the INR, the same patient after half an hour I want to cross check it into another lab, it is coming as 1.1, whom to believe, what to believe. So, this neural oral anticoagulants, you do not have to monitor INR. You can start the medication, it is immediately acting, you do not have to wait for 3 to 5 days and when you do not have to monitor the INR, you can, there is a big, uh, very effectively we can prevent the stroke. When you give warfarin, suppose the INR is low, you are not preventing the stroke. And other side of it, suppose INR is very high, many of my patients are coming back to me with intracranial bleed, with uh, other major site bleed and hemorrhoids, so many other bleeding problems. And another important thing I have noticed in Indian patients is many of the uneducated groups, they do not even bother to monitor the INR, one fine morning they end up with a major catastrophe bleeding. Educated group at least they go once in two weeks to the lab and proper lab and they keep on monitoring the INR. So, especially these groups, this novel oral anticoagulant agents are very, very useful. Another important aspect of this medicine is most of these patients, those who are on oral anticoagulant medication, warfarin or newer oral anticoagulation, they have to undergo other procedures like dental extraction, like small surgeries, like any other procedures. So, they have to stop this medication, they have to wait for 3 4 days, INR come back to normal, during that time they have to switch over to heparin, then injection heparin, then they come back when we restarted again continue heparin overlapping for 2 3 days, they need hospital admission. All these things are another important aspect of warfarin therapy. If you are taking newer oral anticoagulants, nothing is required, the day 1 you can stop the day 2 you can restart. See, there are many newer oral anticoagulants. The first one come is uh, Pradaxa or Dabigatron and second one is uh, Arvaraxaban and Apixaban and newer oral anticoagulants are also, uh, newer and newer oral anticoagulants also FDA is approving. However, only Dabigatron is having uh, an effective antidote if the patient is come with bleeding and I think uh, this is one of the, com I think Dabigatran that is Pradaxa company, they are freely uh, giving this antidote if any patient is come with uh, bleeding complications and that will save the patient's emergency uh, condition and of course, there is a price for this. When you say this advantage, there is a disadvantage also. Warfarin is very cheap, most of the our patients can afford it, unlike NOAC, no, newer oral anticoagulants are costlier. However, my view is the complications of warfarin, the money they are spending to manage the complications, the money our patients are spending to monitor the INR the money our patients and their relatives are spending to repeatedly going to hospital to monitor the INR and if they need any procedure they have to read they have to admit to the hospital to switch over from oral anticoagulants injection apparent all this put together I think 
annual budget if you take it may not be very costly even if uh, you take oral anticoagulant agents combat warfarin. So, I strongly recommend for those who are having atrial fibrillation in non valvular atrial fibrillation this newer oral anticoagulant can be used uh, to prevent